We just released a commercial for CG Spectrum, which we made entirely in-house. And in this video, I'm going to break down the post-production process by taking you through the visual effects pipeline step by step. Hi, I'm Sean Amlander, Department Head of Compositing here at CG Spectrum. Last time, we were running around the desert getting this thing filmed. If you want to check that out, it's here. But now, let's bring this worm to life. After filming, our director Theo Brown did an initial edit before passing it over to Jeremy Chin, CG Spectrum's global COO, who happened to moonlight as our final VFX editor for the commercial. They began by cutting together the footage from our live action desert shoot. The first cut was sent over to the CG Spectrum team to begin planning out the VFX. Then an overall retime was done to ensure the commercial hit our 30 second mark a typical time frame for an ad such as this. For a VFX artist, timing is everything. So these edits and timings help to shape the action of the sandworm, the hero or villain of our commercial. From humble beginnings as a thumbnail sketch by concept artist Brandon Reimkin, our worm soon turned into a gruesome character. From here, the worm really began to take shape. We started seeing beak and teeth, shell and spine, Brandon drew inspiration from botfly larvae and deep ocean scale worms, as well as turtle shells, alligator scales, and even a bore drill bit. Knowing how to gather reference is a crucial part of every VFX artist's job. The end result, totally and truly terrifying. With our worm concept approved, model texture artist Chun Chun Yang had the job of bringing Brandon's concept to life. She created the base mesh inside of Maya, sculpted and retopologized it in ZBrush, then went back to Maya for UV unwrap. Next, she moved it into Substance Painter to give the worm color and texture. Chun Chun's main challenge was trying to capture the organic structure of the worm with a good base mesh that was not too heavy, but still very detailed. A good modeler ensures the geometry can be easily passed down the pipeline for other departments to work with. One of those departments is rigging, which came next. Worms may not have bones in real life, but this is where our sandworm definitely differs. Brian Bentley picked up Chun Chun's model and generated a rig, the bones and controls of the worm, so it could be animated in a realistic fashion. Brian studied insect morphology to make sure he was getting the movement capabilities of a worm right so that animation could do their thing. Knowledge of human and animal anatomy goes a long way for a rigging artist. Before we move on to animating the worm, let's sidestep for a moment and talk about setting up our CG environment. This is where the action takes place. Drawing inspiration from epic desert scenes in Dune and The Mandalorian, we created the initial environment and background design based on the timing of animated elements and what was going to happen inside the plate. The foreground dune was created to act as the ground for the real life actor to be walking on. The background and midground was the worm's terrain. At this early stage, layout and environment artists often just work with proxy geometry to easily move stuff around the scene until they're happy with it. Once the layout was locked down, real-time artist William Fauché helped to define our environment, adding set dressing and lighting using Unreal Engine, then rendering it. When it comes to lighting, you often want it to match the plate, but you also want it to ensure your CG characters and props pop. So it's a bit of a balancing act between realism and what you want as an artistic look. Using the model and textures from Chun Chun, he matched the overall look of the worm to be closer to Brandon's approved concept art, while also referencing a bunch of stuff in nature. Nature is quite interesting in that it offers us an abundance of cool, inspiring reference. The first thing animator Scott Claus did was a quick worm-like motion that he showed the team for feedback. Feedback is essential in collaborative, team-based projects. Next came the animation blocking stage, a rough pass to demonstrate where the worm would be positioned and its subsequent actions. While this was happening, Scott was also watching a ton of reference for inspiration. Dune, Star Wars Return of the Jedi, videos of real life pythons, and the worms from the 90s movie, Tremors. Finding reference is extremely important 
both real life as well as creative artistic reference. Every fantasy character has to have some basis in reality, or the audiences will not buy it. As far back as Disney's Fantasia in the 40s, animators studied birds to inspire the look of the dinosaurs in that film. Once blocking and movement was all worked out, Scott moved on to refining the worm's wicked wiggle. Working with the timings of Scott's animation, effects artist Daniel Hurrigan added a range of effects elements, lots of moving sand and billowing dust reacting to the worm's movement, and the spit as well coming out of the worm's mouth, which quite honestly he found to be quite fun and somewhat gross. Some of the best effects tend to be just a little bit icky. Daniel's biggest challenge by far was dealing with the resolution of the sand and trying to get enough points into the simulation to not only make it look realistic, but also to render it without making his computer explode. And then it was over to me, the last stop in the VFX pipeline, known as compositing. I worked with the passes coming from Unreal as well as Houdini. I had to prepare the plates and extract our actor not only from the green screen, but we also needed to actively rotoscope him from the initial desert scene. Taking all of these elements, both the worm, the effects, as well as the actual CG environments, and our live action plates, we had to blend both the photorealistic and CG elements to become and feel natural based upon two separate locations the desert and the office. We had to also do a screen insert when our actors sat down at the computer to make it look like they were interacting with a student in the scene. The student used in the screen insert is CG Spectrum's technical assistant head, Penny, who also illustrated the fantastic movie poster art for this project. Penny used Adobe Photoshop and a Wacom Intos 5 tablet for her artwork and a small physical sketchbook on the side. Her work was based on the brief for the commercial and Brandon's approved concept art of the worm. After that, our commercial went back to Jeremy for sound, color, graphics, and final retiming, and then it's exported and ready to go. So that's how the CG Spectrum Worm commercial was made. If you want to be able to create epic scenes like this, head over to the CG Spectrum website and check out some of our industry-led courses, many of them mentored by the very people who made this commercial. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.